Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 6th, and it is a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It was in the uh, mid-60s when I got up this morning. Very pleasant day to go out and work in the yard and got some yard work done. Brought in some uh, some of the vegetables from the garden, which was, was nice, and uh, got them cleaned up and processed and whatnot, and here I am. Uh, it's going to get into the 80s today, so it's not going to be cool all day, but beautiful morning. Ah, so, a lot of stuff I want to talk about today. Uh, the tobacco of the week is uh, actually, believe it or not, it's crooner, uh, which I'm very happy about because I wanted to finish up the crooner. However, there's only one other pouch of tobacco left, and that one has been hanging around un unchosen, uh, which is this 1022 modified, which is from my friend Jim Finn. So I'm going to be smoking this today because you all heard me talk about crooner before, so you don't really need to hear about crooner. So I'll tell you more about the 1022 modified and as, as we go along. Uh, and the pipe I'm going to be smoking today is a modified and rather old <laughs> Missouri Meerschaum Country Gentleman. And I'll tell you more about this and some thoughts I've got on uh, corn cob pipes recently. But uh, let me let me get this loaded up. I wanted to show you the tobacco, which I have out here on a tray. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, you can see it's a nice mixture of uh, light and dark. It's a Virginia blend, uh, and it is a combination of two Sutliff blends that I have completely forgotten. So I'm going to pull up my phone and pull up my note because I forgot. So it's uh, the five, 515RC1, which is the Mature Red Virginia, and the 507S, which is a Stove Virginia. So that's the dark stuff, and the Mature Red is the lighter stuff in this. This is a blend that I guess I'm, I'm not, I'm on the speakeasy form. I'm actually not very active on it. I barely ever look at it just because of time. Uh, and I'm going to load this up while I talk to you. Uh, but, you know, some folks on there come up with their own blends and they put the recipes up and some of them become quite popular. And this is one of the ones that apparently has uh, taken on a bit of a life of its own and a lot of folks enjoy it. So the blend is, is those two components that I mentioned. So this is a pure Virginia blend. But it's Jim wrote modified on this and he told me when he sent it to me that he sometimes puts a little bit of oriental silk in it for some, uh, some orientals. So that may or may not be the case here, I because he said it's it, it's it doesn't smell like it's got any Orientals in it. Just when I stick my nose in the pouch, but it's been sitting around for a while, so who knows? Anyway, I'm trying to fit all this in the bowl because I'm not going to have enough. Unfortunately, I've got that left over, but we'll mix that with some haunted bookshop probably later today. All right, so let's get this lit up. And I wanted to talk about corn cob pipes today, and that's why I've got the cob out. I haven't smoked a cob. I smoke them occasionally, maybe like maybe once a month, and I don't think I've smoked a cob on a video in a very long time. Oh, that's nice. I think he did put some orientals in this. Just get the thing lit here. There we go. Copious amounts of white smoke, Big Dave. Big Dave was asking on the live stream on Friday if what, what blends produce copious amounts of white smoke. Oh, I like this. This is very nice. Mm. I'm definitely getting the Orientals out of this too, so I'm going to have to ask him what he, what he actually put in here.
it's got, um, it's the kind of Virginia I like. I don't, I don't like the tangy, um, uh, bright Virginias. They, they, they just don't work with my palate, but a, a deep, sweet Virginia is, is a nice change of pace for me because I'm mostly a burly smoker. And, uh, this, this definitely fits the bill. So, and that little touch of Oriental is nice too. So if you want to try to make this yourself, it is just those two components mixed 50-50, um, 515 RC and 507S. Uh, one is the uh, mature red Virginia from Sutliff and the other is the uh, stoved Virginia from Sutliff. Hmm. Okay. So this pipe is very old. Um, I modified this. I don't remember exactly when, but I'm guessing it was before 2010, maybe 2008, 2009. Uh, so what's that? 14, 15 years. So been around a long time. I used to smoke the heck out of this, you know, probably smoking it. Actually, a couple times a week sometimes because I take it fishing. I've used it as a shop pipe. Um, and over the last couple of years, I've just sort of gotten to the point where I'm only smoking a cub maybe once a month or so. So it's, it's kind of fallen out of the rotation. But for a good, oh, at least 10 years, this thing was smoked pretty heavily. And it's still fine. It's still absolutely fine. The modifications I did was, um, you know, I chipped out the the shank insert, and I've, I've got videos on cob modification. I basically used that process. This is an older one, so I would have used pipe mud in it, just cigar ash and, and water. And uh, the stem is brand new. Uh, it had just the standard stem on it, and I probably have gone through three or four of those stems because I chew through them like crazy. Um, but this is one that I made recently and I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this but you can kind of yeah hopefully you can see the funneling on that and everything so this this is the, the basic um, way I make the cob replacement stem it's got a Delrin tenon um, and you can see how the the funneling is what you would expect on a actual um, an actual pipe a well-made stem <laughs> but I was experimenting with this uh, I, I hadn't made saddle stems for cobs before and the drilling was a bit off and I don't know if you can see this well or not but down in here it's just a little bit too thin so I didn't want to give this away or sell it or anything and I thought well I don't have any of my own cob stems so I got one now it'll probably be fine but you know I've had cobs that I smoke straight from smoking pipes without doing any modifications and they're they're always fine. So you don't have to do that stuff. But what got me thinking about this was somebody somebody asked me a question on one of my corn cut pipe modification videos uh, in the comments recently. And they asked, you know, how long do corn cut pipes last? And I said, you know, I've got more than 10 years for sure, and they're, they're fine. It just got me thinking about cobs in general, you know, the value that you get out of them and all that. And at the time when I bought this, at the time when I made those coin cob pipe modification videos, which by the way are the most popular videos I've ever made, they are constantly in the top 10 views, um, which is yeah, surprising as heck to me, but I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I'm grateful for the viewership. Uh, when I made those videos, these cost about $8. So, you know, they're cheap. They were cheap. I checked this morning, and this would now cost $18. And the question is, is that worth it? You know, $18... Uh, you, you're getting into the range where you know you're 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 about half the price of a Rossi, and Rossies are darn fine briar pipes. 
So is it worthwhile to buy a corn cob pipe when you could buy a briar pipe for just you know about double that, maybe a little bit over it, forty to fifty dollar range? A lot of folks will give the advice when someone says, "I want to start pipe smoking. What, what should I buy?" They'll give the advice, "Get get a corn cob pipe." great first you know starter pipe and I don't agree with that I've never agreed with that the reason is if you're gonna be a pipe smoker you're probably gonna wind up accumulating briar pipes and a briar pipe smokes differently than a corn cup pipe it's not a vast difference but it is different it's learning to smoke this does not mean you can pick up a briar and smoke it it just doesn't work that way Briar is unique. It's got some characteristics that take some time to, to really get the feel for. And there are things that are hard to put into words, but it's stuff like, you know, the briar pipe changes over time. It definitely changes. And I've said this a million times, you know, you got to smoke it 70 to 100 times before that pipe is settled in and it's your pipe. Uh, don't know why, but it just works that way. And other people have said the same. Cobs don't really change that much. You know, you get first couple smokes, you're gonna if you don't modify them, you're gonna get that burnt wood flavor from the the shank extension. After that, they settle down. You know, the inside gets caramelized, and they're pretty much set. So that's a good thing if you don't want to mess around. You know, if you don't want to wait for that. But for me, part of the joy of a briar pipe is that process of getting to know it and having it change. So I don't. For a beginner, I, what I would recommend is a inexpensive billiard, uh, something like a Rossi. Why billiard? It's just, it's the most common. When you think of a pipe, that's what you think of, right? The, the, the straight billiard shape. That's, that's the iconic pipe shape. And you, you should, I don't know, it just makes sense to me that you would start with something that when you think pipe, that's what's in your mind. A lot of people go for these big bent things and you know free hands and stuff like that and yeah I get it you know you're you you want to enjoy the the look of that and you that's what you you feel is is going to fit better with your style and everything but yeah, just get a little billiard and learn to smoke it and then you can go off and go crazy That's my advice Okay so you're You've got your billiard, you're happy with it, you've learned to smoke it, uh, maybe you bought another briar or something. Should you get a corn cob pipe? If you want one, yeah. They're still good value, you know. They're not as good a value as they used to be, but they're still, you know, they, they're fine pipes, they, they're enjoyable. Um, they're durable, they, la they last a very long time, and, you know, you're less worried about losing them, dropping them, you know, that kind of stuff. So for fishing and hiking and things like that, yeah, I, I think they're probably, they have their place. But they're not the bargain they used to be. And that's got, that's in no way meant to reflect poorly on Missouri Meerschaum because they make a really high quality product and they have to make it, you know, they have to pay to make it and everything's more expensive now. Uh, just shipping costs and transportation and stuff like that are going crazy. And it's harder to find people to work for reasons I don't quite understand, but. Uh, let's not get into that. It's a crazy world. So I'm sure Missouri Meerschaum is doing the best they can to keep the price as low as they can and stay in business. You know, that's that's the challenge. Uh, I should have seen this before because it's been quite a while, I guess. But uh, when researching this this morning, I, I went to look at Aristocobs website and it's not there anymore. So apparently Aristocob closed up shop. I didn't know that. Uh, Hope all is well, Scott. If you're if you're out there, um, you know Scott's a wonderful guy, and he had a fantastic uh, site that sold cobs and stems and everything else. You know, his go to for that kind of stuff. I 
I have is, haven't seen as much cob modification, you know, videos or stuff on Instagram. Maybe that's because of the price. I don't know. But it's just harder to survive in this environment. And, you know, a company like Missouri Mearsham has to make a choice. You know, they've, they've got the responsibility of their employers, their employees, and, and you know, the, the company itself has to, has to be maintained. You know, all those employees are supporting families and, and whatnot. And, you know, so do you continue to sell pipes for $8 and have to lay off half your staff? Or do you increase the cost of your pipes so that you can continue to pay your staff? It's a tough decision a lot of times. So the point is, I, I don't in any way hold Missouri Mearsham accountable for the higher price. Well, I hold them accountable for it, but I don't blame them for it. Um, it's just life today. But is it worth it? Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I have this. I still enjoy it. I'm not going to buy another one, but I'm not going to buy another factory pipe either. You know, it's got nothing to do with the cost. It's got more to do with the fact that I've got more than I need. So I guess this would be my advice. If you're new to pipe smoking, get yourself a, a basket billiard or a Rossi billiard or something like that. If you're an established pipe smoker and you think you enjoy a corn cob or you've never tried a corn cob, get one, try it, yes. Next time you're ordering from smoking pipes and you gotta get up to that free shipping level, add a corn cob pipe, give it a try. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't think, unless you just fall in love with them and that's what you want to smoke, value's just not there anymore. Times change. But they are cool. I mean, I'm just I'm just noticing the, the rim of this, how it's, I don't know if that's chipped over time or if that's actually burned away over time, but you know, it's just, there is something very cool about the, the coloring and everything else on that. It just, and of course, you're not going to get that out of the box. <laughs> yeah, this is, <clears throat> this is uh, 14 or 15 years of work. <laughs> well, not work, but smoking so this is good stuff um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this this 1022 but I I think a I think a big part of my enjoyment is actually the, the added uh, Orientals. I'm, I'm certain they're there. Watch Jim will comment and say, oh, no, I didn't add anything. <laughs> but uh, uh, the Virginia is perfect. It, it's the right balance for me. But if it didn't have those Orientals, I'd probably find this to be a bit boring. Uh, but, yeah, I would I would... I would probably, I will probably ask Jim to give me the recipe for this and uh, probably make some more because this is darn good stuff. All right, so what's the plan for today? <laughs> the wife is still in Pittsburgh. She was coming home last Thursday. <laughs> she didn't quite make it. Then she was coming home yesterday. Now she's coming home Monday. It's fine. She's with her family. She's enjoying herself and... Uh, they need they need her there, so I'm okay with that. But we already took care of the garden, brought in uh, cherry tomatoes, a couple of Roma tomatoes. Tomatoes are odd this year. Well, they're often odd. I can grow cherry tomatoes like there's no tomorrow, but when it comes to like Romas or beefsteak or any of those, I just 
I'll get leaves galore. I'll, I'll get flowers that never turn into tomatoes. Um, we got a couple of romas. We got three roma tomatoes. Um, and one of them was, was pecked away by a bird, I think. Um, something ate the end of it. So that's, that's not good. If anybody has any good tomato growing tips, let me know. Uh, and, and the cherry tomatoes are in the same bed. They're getting the same amount of water and everything. It's not like there's some big difference between them. I just don't know what the problem is with the uh, the larger tomatoes. They just never fruit for me. They grow, get flowers, but they never fruit. I also brought in the last of the, uh, the greens, field greens, whatever you call them, salad greens. Uh, got a about a, a supermarket box size container of, of greens uh, today and previously got about two of those so you know considering those are four or five dollars each the plants more than paid for themselves and they were easy to grow and what else did, oh the tomatillos uh, I got about five of those I'm gonna combine those with our CSA tomatillos later today and make a tomatillo sauce which I really enjoy just roast them with some garlic and um, uh, jalapeno pepper and then put it all in a blender and blend it up. It's, it's good stuff. Um, salsa verde, I think it's called. I think. I, I, don't, I don't know for certain. I call it tomatillo sauce because that's what the recipe calls it. And uh, there was something else that came in. Cherry oh, the ground cherries. Ground cherries are doing great. Um, Got about a pint of those that I'm freezing right now because I want to make jam and we'll get ground cherries from the CSA and we'll continue to get them from here. I'm going to just collect them all up and make a ground cherry jam, which is very, very good. We've made it in the past. Um, I do enjoy that. Um, not, don't have much of a sweet tooth, but that, that's one thing I'll go for. Yeah, so that's, that was the garden today, and uh, do a little bit more yard work, maybe some weeding uh, this afternoon after the sun goes down, uh, give the dog some time. I've been doing a little bit of woodworking, I've, I've got to finish, i got to make drawers, <laughs> and I'm, I'm such an idiot, I, <laughs> for some reason I want to make dovetail drawers, I've dovetailed the carcass on this thing, it's, I'm looking at it, that's what I'm looking over here. And it's very nice. I'm happy with that. But I got to make five drawers, and I figure, well, what's the, what's the point of making a dovetail carcass if you're not going to make the drawers dovetail? And then it's like, okay, I can do that. But now I want to do half lap dovetails on the front, and I don't remember if I've ever done half lap dovetails. I think I have because I, I know how to do it. But I, so I'm playing around trying to make a little box using half laps just to get some practice, and it's not going well. So, so that's been that. Uh, and so I might do a little bit of work on that, uh, but I'm not going to do much more. Just some weeding, maybe a little, little woodworking. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this 1022 in the cob. Stem turned out nice. I'm, I'm happy with the stem. Happy with the tobacco. Happy with the cob. I'm just happy. Well, I am rambling. And uh, while I may not have much to do today, you might, so. I should let you all get off to, to do your thing. So thanks for joining me. Uh, be back with a live stream on Friday as usual. So I hope you can join us. It's 8 p.m. Friday, and uh, we'd love to have more folks show up for that. It's, it's always a great time. Uh, just silliness. Pipe smoking and silliness. That's all it is, but we, we have a good time. And I don't often say this, but if you're interested, subscribe. Oh, I have now been um, age restricted by YouTube, probably because of the shenanigans on the live stream. <laughs> so if you're not signed in, you won't be able to watch my videos. Uh, 
if you're not subscribed, you're probably not going to see them. Uh, and, you know, the notification thing is always useful for the live stream. So turn on the notifications, subscribe, hit the like button, comment, all that good stuff. Please. Not, not that I'm running after numbers or anything. I just want to grow the community. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to get our videos, everyone's videos promoted. So I try to always hit that like button when I watch a video. Uh, just because it helps get them into that algorithm and get other people to see them. So do it not just for me, but for everybody. All right, folks, with that, I hope you all have a fantastic uh, Sunday and are looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.